Hi, my name is Saz. Welcome to this prayer time, a time of reflection and a time of meditation. And we're going to be talking about the Day of Atonement, which is founded in Leviticus chapter 16. So I'm not going to do all of it as it's a long chapter. So I'm going to be doing 1, 2, verse 7. So God spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, who were killed when they offered unholy fire to God. He said, tell your brother Aaron that only at the proper time is he to go behind the curtain into the most holy place, because that is where I appear in a cloud above the lid of the conference box. If he disobeys, he will be killed. He may enter the holy place only after if he has brought a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Then the God gave the following instruction. Before Aaron goes into the most holy place, he must take a bath and put on the priestly garments, the linen robe and shorts, the belt and a turban. The community of Israel shall give Aaron two male goats for sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall offer a bull as sacrifice to take away his own sins and those of his family. Then he shall take the two goats to the entrance of the tent of God's presence. And let us say, Amen. So the Day of Atonement, also known as Yom Kippur, was the most solemn holy day of all Israelites feasts and festivals occurring once a year on the 10th day of Tishri, the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar. On that day, the high priest was to perform a ritual to atone for the sins of the people, described in Leviticus 16. The atonement ritual began with Aaron, the high priest of Israel, coming into the Holy of Holies. This day was underscored by God telling Moses to warn Aaron not to come into the most holy place, wherever he felt like it. It could only come on this special day, once a year. This was not a summary to be taken lightly and the people were to understand that atonement for sin was to be done God's way. Before entering the tabernacle, Aaron was to bath and to put on special garments, then sacrifice a bull for a sin offering for himself and his family. The blood of the bull was to be sprinkled on the Ark of the Covenant. When Aaron was to bring two goats, one to be sacrificed because of the uncleanness and rebellion of the Israelites, whatever their sins have been. And its blood was sprinkled on the Ark of Convent. The other goats was used as a scapegoat. Aaron placed his hands on its head confessed only it's the rebellion and wickedness of the Israelites and sent the goats out with a pointed man who released it into the wilderness. The goat carried on itself all the sins of people which were forgiven for another year. The symbolic significance of this ritual, particularly to Christians, is seen first in washing and cleansing of the high priest, the man who released the goats, the man who took the sacrificed animals outside the camp to burn. Israelites' washing ceremonies were required often throughout the Old Testament. 
and symbolise the need for mankind to be cleansed of sin. But it wasn't until Jesus came to make the once for all sacrifice that the need of cleansing ceremonies ceased, which mentioned in Hebrews 7 verse 27. The blood of bulls and goats should only atone, could only atone for sins if the rituals were continually done year after year, while Christ's sacrifice was sufficient for all the sins of all who would ever believe in him. When he sacrificed was made, he declared, it is finished. He then sat down at the right hand of God, and no further sacrifice was ever needed. The completeness of the sacrifice of Christ is also seen in the two goats. The blood of the first goat was sprinkled on the ark, ritually pleasing the wrath of God for another year. The second goat removed the sins of the people into the wilderness where they were forgotten and no longer clung to the people. Sin is both prohibited by God's way, only by the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. It's the act of appeasing the wrath of God the act of atonement of sin and removing it from the sinner. Both together are achieved eternally by Christ. When he sacrificed himself on the cross, he appeased God's wrath against sin, taking that wrath upon him. Since, he have, since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? The removal of sin by the second goat was a living parable of the promise that God remove our sins from us as far as the east is from the west, and that he would remember them no more. Jews today still celebrates the annual day of atonement, which falls on different days each year in September and October, traditionally observing this holy day with a 25 hour period of fasting and intensive prayer. Jews also often spend most days in the synagogue services. Let us say Amen. And let's continue to pray for our nation. Let us bring our cares and concerns before God who loves us. We pray for more workers to gather in the harvest of this kingdom. For places of worship to be places of welcome. And wholesome spiritual nurture for a healthy balance of tradition and explanation. Use us, God, in the building of your kingdom. We pray for our nation and the nations of the world, for upholding of godly principles and just laws. Use us, God, in the building of your kingdom. We pray for those among our families and friends who have no idea of the new life you offer. We pray for them to discover you so they may share the joy of living in your love. Use us, God, in the building of your kingdom. We pray for those who die in and their loved ones, and for those who have passed through death, and the families and friends who miss them. Surround them with your love. 
Use us, God, in the building of your kingdom. We praise you, God, and give you thanks for the fullness of new life. And let us say, Amen. And may God bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace, now and always. Amen.